So, as mentioned, there are uh, parts of us that drive us in different directions. They're all inescapable parts of us. If it's inescapable that we all have these dimensions of the self, and that different people will be dominated in their personality by different dimensions of the, of the self, different drives, it is also inescapable that we will have these different types of people in the city. So, the only question is how we arrange these people. What roles do, they, do we give them in the city? So that the city functions rightly. And this functioning rightly, just like in the soul or in the self, in the city is justice. So what is then justice in the city? It's a rightly ordered city. It's a city in which the members are ordered right. Because remember, the ancient Greek city, the ancient Greek city state, the ancient Greek society was much more organic, was based, shaped by close relationships between the members of the city. The size was also small, you know, Ellensburg size, basically. So they know each, knew each other and, and so on. What is then the right break? The right arrangement, obviously, would be to have those who are ruled by reason rule over the those who are spirited uh, and uh, uh, those who are ruled by their appetites. Who are these people? Though? And what are the roles that are best fit for their personality, for their for the best that they can be? Because we want everyone to do what they're best suited to do. Well, those. Plato starts with talking about guardians, but then he distinguishes between different guardians. Guardians, understand that the term guardians not as uh, someone who guards necessarily, but someone who guides rather, who guards and guides the city. That, at first, there's one group, but then he distinguishes between them. He distinguishes between the few of the guardians who through natural aptitude and then, very importantly, education, because remember, it doesn't matter if you have the aptitude, you need to cultivate, you need to pursue that aptitude, you need to pursue truth, and it's a very hard path. So the few who are able to not only have those aptitudes, but then are uh, developed, educated, cultivated, to exercise that aptitude, who are ruled by reason then, will be the rulers, the guardian rulers. These will be the ones who we would want to rule, therefore. Right? Why? Because you want the city to be governed rightly. But how do you know how to govern the city unless you know what's right, what's wrong? How do you know what's right, what's wrong, unless you know what's right, what's wrong in your own life? How do you know how to arrange, to how to pass laws? What are laws? And laws are rules that order the relationship between these people. Education, this is why education and law uh, for the Greeks was, was, were two things that were very close, unlike we think about it. We think about laws very dis distinct from education. We, we would recoil at the idea that laws would educate us. However, they do. So these would be the rulers. Right? What do they bring to the city? Wisdom. The knowledge of right and wrong. So we want them to go. Then, in the ideal city, this is the ideal city, right? Then, the, the, the spirited ones. Those who have some, you know, reason, and, but the, they're more dominated, and the best attitude they have is the spirited part. You know, think of football players, right? You want a quarterback who is a quarterback, and, and so on, and, and so on, right? You need, you want the right people in the right place. People who are powerful in the place where you need people who are powerful, right? So that's the same with the, those who are ruled by the spirited part, the, the, the thing that pushes towards action, the will, the let's do it thing. Obviously it will be the soldiers, the soldier guardians, the soldiers, or he calls them auxiliaries. Okay? Rulers, soldiers, and the grand mass of people, regular mass of people, where they would, because you, as you see it's very hard to be here, to be ruled by reason, really, to pursue truth, 
remember Socrates was basically condemned to death right because of this and he was wrong so Plato is a disciple of Socrates he knows what happened he actually knows what happened in his life so the mass of people are dominated by their appetite right? so what would we uh, what role would we give them they would be the producers the craftsmen the merchants the workers right? people who produce who make things so you see, the roles become quite specialized in the why. And when you read the Republic, you're going to stand back and say, well, this doesn't look like a democracy. Well, of course not. Of course not. We're talking about the best possible regime. The ideal regime. Now, is this possible to actually have such a city? Clearly, Athens was it is. I mean, Plato lived, as I said, in a time of turmoil in the Greek city-states and in Athens. They have all experienced dictatorships, bloodshed, wars, and so on and so on. So, they know life. These are not, remember always, these are, these are people who are deeply involved in, in the city, and also, you know, Socrates was a war hero. Um, so, is this possible? Well, theoretically, it is. Theoretically, it is, Plato, Socrates says, but and if it's possible theoretically, meaning if it's possible in the idea of it, why wouldn't it be possible in reality? However, he's, he's, he's quick to say in dialogue, Socrates says this, he's quick to say that, well, we can expect this to decay, and to decay pretty fast. Now, a quick word, and we're moving fast towards uh, uh, closing this discussion, a quick word on, on this. What does it mean to be ruled by, you know, uh, the noose, understanding, really? Not only be ruled by it, by, but to also pursue and get closer to truth, because these are two different things. You have the attitude, right? Maybe you're, but you have to follow. Well, here is where the famous image, which I'm not going to go in detail uh, into discussing it, but you will encounter it later and you're free to, to, to read about it, obviously, invite you to do so, and also you have read about it in your textbook, uh, in the textbook sections that I posted. It's a famous metaphor of the, of the image of the cave. Right? This is the image of the cave. So there is The, the story, it's a, it's a story, right? It's a metaphor. The story of the cave that uh, Socrates tells in, in the Republic, um, he basically depicts the world as a dark cave, where most of the people live here in the depths of the cave, and they spend their lives looking at the wall of the cave. And they're chained here. What do they see on the wall of the cave? Well, behind them is a wall with a fire and puppets. Different puppets. Animals, whatever. Don't ask me what animal that is. So animals that are shown behind, well, actually, right, animals and puppets that are passed in front of a flame. And this is the flame, and they reflect on the wall. So what, what do they see then, if they look at the wall? They look this way. These people look at the wall. And you have puppets reflected on the wall. So what they see are shades, projections. But this is all they see. Now if you were born here and you keep looking at this wall, with all these shades moving, this is reality for you. Appearance is reality. And this is how most of us, most of the people live, according to Socrates. We take appearance for reality. Let me give you an example, um, well, a little bit later. So, one of them is taken, and so some, some are forced it, because it's very hard, if you spend your life in the dark cave, and it is, to be snatched out of it, because this is reality. Remember?